Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today, I do want to be addressing that slash dev article that Riot put out of Men and Monsters, where they specifically talk about how they design champions and why they design champions the way they do. Now, if you're going into this expecting Riot to be making a promise to change things in the future or to do things differently, you're already going to be disappointed. And in fact, this article actually makes me a little upset about a lot of the things that Riot have more or less said they're going to be doing for the future of League of Legends champion design, but I will at least talk about a couple of things that they say that do make a lot of sense, but generally speaking, I'm a little disappointed with what this article essentially reveals. Now, this isn't an article that's saying they're going to promise to change anything, like I said before. This is essentially just them saying, here is how we do things, now you know. They're, so even though they do make a couple of reassurances, so they do say, for example, we're going to get our next monster champion, probably better called a creature champion, to use the new terminology, in 2022, generally speaking, that's not cause for celebration as a whole. But let's go ahead and talk about Riot, at least talk about the things that they get correct in this article. The biggest thing is that Riot have essentially noticed the ongoing trend of the community talking about monster champions and how a lot of the champions coming out, and especially a lot of the skins coming out, are, for, are very... Uh, physically attractive characters, for one, but also a lot of the skins coming out as well are also t prettying up, I think, older champions that maybe aren't so popular and maybe aren't so likable. One can even think back to the Arcana Zara skin, which is very recent, or the Eternal Dragon Brand skin, which is a little bit further back, or uh, Flesh Thresh, better known as Spirit Blossom Thresh, that came out, you know, last year. All these skins are kind of prettying up these characters, and if you look back on the last three years of champion design, which is when Riot actually started uh, making a conscious effort to release champions that are more broadly appealing. You see across the board champions that are being designed to be uh, very physically attractive and not really playing a lot with individual body types, which also does kind of fly in the face of what Riot is talking about here, where they say they want to make champions broadly appealing, and that generally means humans, but then we don't get humans with interesting body types. But again, I'm sort of getting ahead of myself here. But either way, so Riot essentially said, we want to make champions that are more broadly appealing. And so that tends to mean humans. I've talked about this a little bit before in the past, where humans, funnily enough, relate best to and want to see themselves in other humans. Generally speaking, that is true. And you see this across all sorts of media where you have humans be the protagonist or you have humans involved in the plot line somehow, or just because generally speaking, that's what's going to work best. Now, Riot have also basically taken this to heart and been releasing these, these characters. And more importantly, Riot aren't just releasing broadly appealing human champions because they're broadly appealing, but they're also using these characters to try and expand the scope of what League of Legends offers and try to mimic a lot more real-world archetypes, right? So you have Samira, who's sort of a southern refugee mercenary kind of trope, where, you know, different audiences are going to see themselves in Samira versus audiences that are going to see themselves in Garen, let's say. Or even uh, if you think about Kiana and her release and how people who are from South America or Central America or, you know, any of those kinds of areas, you know, Mesoamerica, they can kind of see themselves in Kiana and that's sort of a reference to a real world culture that exists that you can touch. And in that regard, that is pretty cool and that is something that I think is unique that we're seeing, right? Riot aren't really releasing champions that are super tropey in regards to fantasy, but they are trying to basically pull from the real world and say, hey guys, check this out. That is a cool thing and I do appreciate that they're doing that. The other thing Riot are doing is that they are broadening their categories of champions. Beforehand, they essentially had, we have human champions, which are humans or near enough to humans. So Set technically qualifies as a human champion according to Riot's new definitions because he's close enough, even though he's technically Vestai and he's close enough. And you had humanoids, which was essentially everything else. Now, the problem with this is that essentially that means that when Riot are looking at champions to create, they essentially say, well, if we release a humanoid, that counts. And then when we end up with a champion that more or less is human, someone like Renekton, for example, I don't think really scratches that itch for a very wildly monster type champion, we're a little disappointed. But also that technically checks Riot's quota for a non-human champion, so they move on from there. So the biggest thing here is that Riot are essentially acknowledging that now we have humans, we have humanoids, which are generally characters that have human morphology or that are mostly humans, but are wildly different in some regards. Renekton, for example, is a humanoid. Uh, Urgot, for example, falls into the humanoid category, as does Aatrox, which I do quite like because I feel like they could have been very easily included in the human category, but you can kind of see how they're a little bit less human than uh, a champion like Set, for example, or Pike, who is also called out as a human champion. 
And then they have a third category now, which they have deemed creature champions. And this is characters that are very wildly different from human, that have very different morphologies, that very much so you're not going to look at and say, oh, I can see myself in this person from a physical standpoint. Obviously, you can still get there from an emotional standpoint, which again, I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But at least acknowledging, hey, creature champions exist and people like creature champions and we're going to call them out so we can specifically say in the future, we haven't done a creature champion in a while, even if they've done other humanoids, that is a... That that is progress, and I do feel like at least right acknowledging that they exist is good. However, I do think that at the end of the day, this article is a letdown for a bunch of reasons. First and foremost, is which is that it is just informing us of what Riot in continued to do. They're not intending to change anything. And essentially, this means that Riot essentially talked about in this article that they they do a 70-30 split. So 70% of the champions released in a given year. This includes VGUs, which is really bad for a couple of reasons. But 70% of the champions released in a year are going to be humans. They are intended to be broadly appealing. That is code for humans. 30% of the champions released in a year are going to be non-humans, right? The creature champions or humanoids. Now... This initially sounds okay. If they release 10 champions in a year, we get three non-humans or humanoid champions, which would be not great, but okay. The biggest problem, though, is if we look at Riot's general release cadence, we get six champions a year from release. We get two for mid lane and one for every other role, on top of maybe one or two VGUs per year. That's only seven to eight releases. That means, according to Riot's setup, we're only going to get one or two uh, human or humanoid or non-human champions per year, period. And that also means humanoid champions can fill up those slots. So, for example, uh, next year, we already know that we're going to get a non-human champion in one of the slots. We know that for, for certain. But also, a bunch of the other champions that were on the VGU poll are non-human or humanoids. There's only one that isn't, and that's Quinn. Which means that if one of those champions gets voted in, the other champion we know will not happen that year because, well, that's a non-human or humanoid and VGUs count towards that cap, so that takes up a spot. And that's really disappointing because a lot of the champions that need VGUs that are up for them and that will get them in the future are these non-human and humanoid champions, which means that Riot then have no emphasis to create new characters that are non-human or humanoid because they're essentially filling their quota by doing these reworks and these VGUs, which is then incredibly disappointing because there's a difference between having a champion that already exists in the game that is getting sort of a facelift and getting a new champion in the game that's bringing something interesting and unique to the table that's really allowing Riot to flex their creative muscles and come up with some cool and unique character concepts or designs that we ordinarily wouldn't get. Right? Like, if we have, you know, six or seven humans released in a year, who really cares? We know what they are. They're humans. And even though Riot, I know, will try to do as much as they can, there is a limit to what you can do with humans. So, needlessly restricting themselves in this way is going to lead to, I think, a lot of really boring kits, especially given that their recent trend is to make everyone as pretty as possible, right? If they were doing more champions like Alawi and Braum, for example, I would maybe be more okay with it. But especially over their last couple of releases, we've seen the Gwens, we've seen the V. Diego's, we've seen the Samira's, who at least was a little different in regards to her design. We've seen things like Kaisa, who's just horrendous from a bunch of different standpoints, right? Like, those are the kind of champions they're releasing with their concepts. So it's not like they're even doing anything interesting with their human designs. They're basically just creating someone who looks pretty and then finding a real-world culture to fluff them in, or basically finding something on Runeterra that already exists to fluff them with, which is really, really kind of disappointing overall. The other thing that Riot talk about that I think is really disappointing in general is that they more or less say that champions are not not designed to be characters in the sense that um, in a lot of games they create a character and then they try to find a place for that character to exist in universe. Realistically, Riot create characters as vessels for mechanics in the game. And that level of thinking is really kind of disappointing for a bunch of reasons because it means that Riot don't actually have any intention to do anything with their characters, right? They essentially see a character like Viego as a vessel for the he steals your champion concept. That's really all he is, or all he could have been if Riot hadn't chosen to do something with him. But it also means that for the future, a lot of the other characters that a lot of people have been waiting years for, for new lore, Syndra, for example, or Victor, or Jace, or Skarner, or any number of these characters that exist, Riot has no reason to do anything with them, because they don't see them as characters. They see them as gameplay mechanics. They see them as a part of this competitive MOBA when that isn't necessarily what every player is here for. A lot of players are here for the story, are here for the lore, 
and that's sort of disappointing to hear that Riot don't actually see their character releases as opportunities to create fun and unique characters to drive story, but instead as just we added new mechanics to the game in the form of a champion. So, a, a bunch of really disappointing things here. I may talk about this more on Monday a little bit, especially in regards to how this kind of ruins the fandom that has sprung up around League of Legends and why, for example, League of Legends is not doing nearly as well as a game like Overwatch, which has significantly fewer players at this point, but which has a much better fandom because of the engagement that Blizzard have sort of done because of how they've approached it from a character-first perspective. But we'll get to that on Monday, potentially. Suffice to say for now, this article, while I think it does do a couple of things and does highlight at least a few reasons for why Riot are doing what they're doing, it ultimately is sort of a disappointment to read and uh, really sort of disheartening, especially knowing that for the foreseeable future, we're going to have very few interesting characters from a character design standpoint. But anyways, that's just my thoughts. If you guys thought that article was super great and you really love to read how they're deciding to do this, you know, let me know that down in the comment section below. If you're just as disappointed as me, though, please let me know that as well, because I, I do want to feel like I'm not alone in this. I don't think I am, but you know, just let me know down in the comment section below and hit this video with a like if you agree with what I'm saying here. If you really enjoyed the video as well, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. I've also got some Legends of Runeterra content on Sundays, scratching a bit of that lore itch, so in case you guys are interested. So either way, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you all later.